Not on YouTube, uh, it's your boy. Anyway, uh, I figured I'd do a little update video. It's been a little while since I did a lot of them, not as long as the uh, last one, I mean, uh, the one prior to the first one. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, kind of like stuck between a dilemma a little bit. Like, I ain't gonna lie about it. Well, the dilemma is this. Uh, I'm thinking about buying a truck. Yeah, well, buy a hat. Ooh, excuse me. One of my buddies has a, uh... A 1970 Chevrolet C30. Single cab. A foot bed dually axle. Has a 350 small block in it. It has the, uh, the bully dog transmission, which is a four speed basically. Um, And for those wondering, it's basically what they call a um, cabin chassis truck, more or less, because of the fact that uh, they never really factory came off a dually axle. They were actually, uh, believe it or not, they were sent out for the dually axle part. Uh, they would, I mean, did they actually make beds that actually had dually fenders? Is what I mean to say. They didn't come out. They didn't come back out until '73. With a, then it can then you can get a factory with a dolly bed on it, and you know you can that's with square bodies. It was it's more commonly known as now. The seventy three to eighty seven square body is the one that came off the big dolly factory option with the factory bed. Anything below that, you pretty much was getting a, more or less a cabin chassis truck, <laughs> which ironically is still available today these days. Not the nineteen seventy version, but as but the, the term cabin chassis truck. You can still get that. Now, what a cabin chassis truck is, for those who want to know, is that you you know you have a rolling frame. Um, basically, you just, you just don't have a bed on the back of the truck. I mean, you have the cab, you have the motor, transmission, all the running gear, basically. Fenders, you know, everything on the front is normal. It is you don't have anything on the back. On the anything on the back. Now, what does that mean in general? That means that. That you could, uh, it, you know, you could, you, you have to play with, uh, you, you could do a lot of things. There's all kinds of options. Um, why would people would want to buy these? Because of the fact it saves money for them. Most companies, are, it, it's usually companies that like, uh, Lockheed, for example, or tow truck, uh, tow companies or, or bigger companies. They, they actually, they buy these trucks like that, and they throw a flatbed on the back of it, or they buy a record, put a record bed on a, a utility box. I mean, because they would have to, because they would have to say they would, they would have to take the regular bed off of them anyway. So, if the factory would offer them a chassis and cab truck, it actually would save them money, and it'll be off the truck. And all they gotta do is put their put whatever box, I mean, whatever bed they want to put it back up, back of it. That's why it's still available today because there's a lot of people that buy them that way. Like, like I said, there's a lot. Like I said, there's lots of companies. Like I said, there's. I mean, I would spend all day basically telling you who got what, and so. And yes, back in the '60s, I, I mean, even the '50s technically, you could buy what what would. Well, they didn't really call it cabin chassis back in the 50s, but they call it what they call um, job rated. And then job rated, it went to the 60s, they went to what they call cabin chassis. Like what I'm talking about. <laughs> but this was basically, but yeah. And what it is, is it's a special truck. It's kind of a special truck. Is it, is it, you know, now they did, now to be fair about it, they did make ton and a half trucks. You know, above one ton and you know bigger, but we're not interested in that kind of class. We're talking about just a one ton, 
what they call a cabin, what is like I said, it's called a cabin chassis truck. Now, for those who are wondering, the reason why I'm having a hard time deciding on it, oh, and the price is great too, I mean, don't get me wrong. I love the price what he wants. I love the fact, I love the fact of what he wants for his truck. For those who are wondering, it's a thousand dollar truck. And I just tell me how I'm going to freak out. Like, whoa, a thousand bucks. You know, this thing must be a total turd. <laughs> One, it's not a total turd. Um, frame is excellent. I mean, when I say excellent, I mean, it's fucking beautiful. I've already seen this truck. It is very beautiful on the frame. It does need the typical Chevrolet Russ rockers and whatnot. Not that bad, to be honest with you, for the year. I mean, hell, if I'm that worried about it, I can just literally knock the floor off of it. I mean, I can, I can take the whole entire floor out. They make up, they literally make a whole fucking floor for it. I mean, I can get from LMC for like, not even 700 bucks. I think it was 700, 700, 800 bucks shipped to the house. One big piece. When I mean one big piece, I mean one giant piece. And what I would do is they would take out all the factory floor off of it. Basically, you would you would knock off all the tow and all that and all back there, and it would take a lot less time. And it would come with brand new braces on it and everything. I wouldn't have to do shit to it. And then they had to they would, it would take, you know it would it'd be very easy and very less time because they're going for someone to weld it up, honestly like that. And then you know it'd be a brand new sheet metal, literally. <laughs> and then I would have you know I would have to but anyway. I haven't looked at it, looked at it, but I know the frame is beautiful on it. That part I've seen. Um, it definitely needs rockers for sure. Other than that, it's not too terrible shape. I can't. I mean, I've never seen it on the interior, but not, not. You know, I haven't looked, looked at it yet. And in fact, the beautiful part is, is that it has a title. It has a VIN. It matches up. It runs and drives. Uh, granted, it doesn't have a factory fuel system in it right now, and you had to run it basically like a fuel. You had to put a fuel system on it to make it run and drive technically. But you can put you can hook, you can rig up a temporary fuel system on it and get it to run and drive. I mean, honestly, I mean, it's not hard, especially being a cabin chassis truck. I don't think it'd be that difficult to do. I'm just saying. <laughs> now here's where I'm having kind of a a dilemma. I don't know what kind of bed to put on the back of this thing. <laughs> Cause I don't know. I mean where it's a dilly axle. I can't just put a I can't just well I can't just literally just go, okay, let's throw a bed back on it, um, you know, a factory bed. It should work, right? No. Um, the fleet side bed will not work. And for those who are wondering what a fleet side bed is, that'll be your, your normal bed. I mean, the ones that go straight up and down it doesn't have a step to it. <laughs> step side beds are a little. Anyway, fleet side bed is a normal bed, and they're most people. I mean, I like them. Um, I also like step side. Just depends on what what year, honestly. Now, I have to go back quick, quick. Yeah. I can't run a, I can't run a fleet side bed on my truck, which kind of really sucks. <laughs> Only way I could run a, well, I mean, not the way it sits currently. Now, um, same thing with a, with a step side bed. They make eight foot step side beds for that truck. By the way, it's a standard, it's a single cab eight foot bed. It's not like a huge bed. I mean, it's not a, you know, the truck's not incredibly huge. No, it's just a standard size. It'd be smaller than heavy duty trucks nowadays in fact i mean it weighs pretty consistently less it weighs maybe like four thousand pounds so but it can pull about ten thousand easily pounds so it's a pretty big truck it would handle pretty much anything i want to pull i mean for me personally i mean i'm not pulling semis with it i mean i'm not you know i'm not i don't need an hd h i don't need an hd truck i mean honestly i don't need to pull for i don't need to pull above ten thousand pounds uh trailer weighs about even if a trailer weighs up to like 2,000 pounds, 20, well, even 3,000 pounds, it wouldn't matter. 
all I'm going to be able to pull, all I'm going to pull is like maybe like I said, a regular truck or a standard cab truck with an eight foot bed. I mean, biggest I would do, or a crew cab with an eight foot bed. Those only weigh like 7,000 pounds. So I'd be well within the safety class of that. I'd be exactly on the edge of that pulling power of that truck. And honestly, I would probably take a small block out of it and put an LS motor in it. And with a bigger cam and everything in it, that way I could handle it more power. I mean, it would pull way more. And plus, I would put fucking helper springs on the back of it, you know, bags to, to keep it. But it's a stout ass truck. <laughs> it can pull pretty much anything you want to pull. Short of a semi. So I'm not really worried about that. If I want more white pull, yeah, I'm going to have to get a newer truck. Like I said, like I said, either a, uh, a newer model truck or I would have to get like a 2500 or 3500 one ton i would have to get like a like i said i would have to get like a 90s one ton truck or get a two and a half ton truck well i'm just kidding i'm not gonna get a two and a half ton and, and, and i bought one before i got one on a trade before would i get one these days no they're really big they're really not i mean there's only a few exceptions that rule i do like the uh i like the one a two and a half ton version of the um uh, like the one I'm going to get, like the 67, 71, 67 to 72 models. Um, they're actually really not bad looking. They look really cool. And they look hell awesome with a flatbed on them. And that would be a car hauler, <laughs> honestly. But, but anyway, I'm going to ram a little bit. Now, before somebody's ass is like, can I actually, can you not put a factory bed on it? I could on the on the uh I could honestly on it. I could run a step side bed on it, a foot on there. I could uh I actually got two options on that. I could actually uh or this day does not okay. I'm in West Virginia. Okay, for those who wonder. And starting January of next year, which that truck's not gonna be legal on the road until like probably around June or July of next year or or if I if I if I go with small block route, if I go with the big block, if I change out the motor, then definitely next, like, not next year, but the year after. Because <laughs> I would do all the, oh, see, I'm, I'm actually going to do everything correctly. I'm not going to do half-ass. I'm going to, you know, I'm not, you know, when I get on the road, it's going to be done, ready to roll, literally. And, you know, all these parts do cost money. Like, lots of money. Anyway. Ran over on that one. But anyway, that's what you need where most we January, we're getting rid of the poke tire rule. For those who don't know what that is, that means that the way the law reads is like, I guess for example, that mirror, right? Well, I'll use that mirror for them. The t what it means is that your truck cannot, tire cannot exceed, exceed past your fender flares more than half an inch well not even you know more than half an inch or you would get a big old fine that's what the more or less people call it poke tire i mean you know you know you know tire poke now we're getting rid of that law so which i'm really happy about and, and we're also getting to a uh two-year sticker law which is even better, which just means we're one step away from getting rid of the, the, we're literally one step, we're getting one, we're getting to one step away from getting inspection stickers, which honestly would be amazing as hell, um, and I, I know there's, uh, some people in the, I mean, I know some people in the comments, if I ever get big, that, and they ever watch this, if I ever get big and they ever watch this, I know some people going to say, well, say, what's well, bad, I mean, I mean, there's even a vehicle out there that's going to, Y'all are not going to do anything to your vehicle. These days. There's a reasons why you have to have a spade inspection sticker. Um, guys. First of all. <laughs> the states that do not have state inspection stickers. Does not have. Also does not have uh, smog usually. They are a little different on their rules. If you live in those states, you know exactly what I'm talking about. What I mean is, like, 
if your vehicle, a regular accident, if they, what it means is that if you don't take care of your vehicle and you just let it roll on the road, like, like everybody's thinking it's always going to, you know, your frame, you could have, you could roll around with rotten frames and bad ball buried and, uh, I want to have your, if you cause an accident and it was definitely deemed as you could, you should have replaced it a long time ago, you get fined. Yeah. It's actually worse than the state's special sticker. But the reason why I like it and the reason why I'm excited for it is like you get like you get like me, right? They make it mechanically and I mean I, I make I I, make, I would make that bitch mechanically sound not just a motor and trans, I would make you know, make sure all my suspension is taken care of and everything. I wouldn't roll around and, you know what I'm saying? But I may have body rust. I may I may be able to tackle right then and there. Which would force me to get creative. I'm not saying I would, but I'm just saying people have done it. People do that. I mean, there's no law against it, especially when they put a sticker on it. So, that's what some people, that's to me. There's a difference between structurally problems and cosmetic problems. Partially. And that's the reason why a lot of these vehicles around here get tossed around back and forth. One is because people are trying to pass inspections, and and what they do is they, some of them don't want to do the cosmetic upgrade. Some people want to do the. I guess you see my big, my big fat forehead with <laughs> my hair, in case you're wondering in the mirror. And um, you know that's that's fine. And you know you know I I usually I get a couple of them. I pass a few of them, and then I get rid. Of, I mean I mean I'll get them past a few few of them. I get past and. I am easily get rid of them before that because of the fact my needs have changed or I just want a different truck or car or whatever. I mean, not because I, well, you know, I mean, I can make it almost anything pass. I mean, it's not difficult. I make, I, you know, as long as you're basic, as long as you're mechanically sound and your suspension is sound, it's not really that difficult to get your car pass or a truck. I like trucks better than cars, but. All right. In the car. <laughs> I know. <laughs> We're gonna ignore that. I just happen to like cars more than I do trucks. I mean, I like that. I like trucks more than cars because I can see how them a lot easier, easier. I don't have. I have a hard time getting in and out of cars. I mean, trucks is as bad as cars. You know, I'm not saying that cars don't have a purpose. I'm not saying that at all, guys. I'm just saying that, in fact. This is just nothing but a vlog. <laughs> this is just gonna be just a vlog. I'm not even gonna lie about it. This is just a random, random, random but vlog. <laughs> like I said, I could say it because I don't have sponsors and I'm not cussing out Storm or anything now. But back to story. I could run the step side bed on it because they made they made an eight foot step side bed for that year. 67 to 72. And without modifying the fender flares or anything like that. Because I know somebody's going to ask about that. All I got to do is put a one inch body space. I mean a one inch body lift on that. On that. That whole truck. And what is it? Was it basically is a spacer. Between your between your frame. And because before it's a frame. And then your bed. A little on top of each other. If you put a body spacer. It's like putting space. But it's, it's literally a space between you your frame and your bed if i put a one inch body spacer on it it actually lifted high enough where it won't rub on the tires literally straight up <laughs> so i actually don't have to on um, extend the flares out if i want to or whatever i don't have to on that plus i would actually see if i can get away with see what kind of smallest tires i can get away with as far as all terrain the way they tuck in a little bit better Oh, it don't look super obvious. I mean, like I said, it doesn't matter anyway because we have a we have no poke tire rule, so it literally does not matter at all. And I know I know some people will say, "Well, why don't you just extend the flares out?" I mean, you could totally do that, and it'd be into the wells and and like that. Oh, I'm sorry, guys. It's, I'm just a little early morning. 
<laughs> yeah, I can't help it. But yeah, um, but again, you guys are correct. I could. I could also take a regular sl sleep fleet side bed, buy some my five fenders, spin out the butt, and then weld them on there, and you know get them. You know, I, I could I could spend a lot of money and get to you know I could get some you know you know get them outwards and on the regular bed and hoo hoo that's awesome cool now uh, another thing I could do there's another option I can do um, I could also run a flatbed on the back of the truck and I hate the idea of that. Um, because I'm just not a big fat bed. I'm not a big flat bed person. To be quite frank, if I'm, you know, I'm just gonna be straight up honest about it. I'm, I, I just, I don't really like flat beds. Some trucks look great with a flat bed. Some don't. To me, a '67 to '72 truck does not look that good with a flat bed on it. Honestly, I mean, I know it's personal preference. It look, and you know, I may end up having to do that route. Maybe, maybe not. Okay, probably I'm going to have to do that route unless I decide. Unless I decide the there's there's another alternative I could do. So that's an option, and I really don't care for them. Literally, I do not really care at all for them. I can cut. I get a pipe. I can get a metal pipe. I can. I can, I can make a decent looking, really not bad looking flatbed on the back. I mean, honestly, I could. I could run lights to it. I can run turn signals and all that crap. It would not be that hard to do that on my truck. It would be pretty easy. I wouldn't, and I wouldn't make it past the cab. <laughs> I would have a tire poke <laughs> for sure. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie about it. I would have, but I also would have flares and everything else on the truck to make it look good and decent and everything else. So there's also another route I could do. There's actually two more routes I can do technically on that truck. I can shorten the axle up. And for those wondering, a 67, a 72 axle, dually axle, is called an HO72. For those wondering. I could also get the axle housing shortened. Um, but for those wondering, that means tucked. That means I could actually fit inside of a regular fleet side bed normally. Which means I would have to modify the inside of the, of the, uh, of the bed. <laughs> Which I'm totally fine with, by the way, for, for those are wondering. I, I, that is another option. I could definitely, I don't mind extending the, in, the fender flares on the inside. That's actually not that difficult to do. So is in welding on. For those are wondering, yes, I could weld the all fenders on the outside. I just don't like the look of it, to be honest with you. Not a big fan. <laughs> I don't really like, I don't really like the Billy look on the outside. I mean, I'm just going to be honest with y'all. I'm just not a fan. I'd rather have a tuck Billy. But anyway, <laughs> and I actually would change the spindles out and everything on the uh, tuck dually. I would go with a C20 with a spindle arms and everything on it. That way I could run a very clean, very, very, very look, good looking set of rims and tires on it. And then, yes, I would probably have to go after market all the rims and tires, <laughs> probably, which is fine. I mean, on the rims anyway. I mean, tires obviously aftermarket. Everything's gonna be aftermarket. You're not gonna, I'm not gonna be able to buy it NOS tires for that truck. <laughs> Just saying, because I wouldn't want them. First of all, because tire technology has improved a lot since 1970. <laughs> anyway, that's another rant for another day <laughs> on that one. But anyway, there is one option there, or my other option is that I simply change out the axle entirely. Uh, I mean, I could definitely put a, uh, I could get a, like, a, I guess I guess I could pick up a, uh, for example, I could pick up a, uh, three, uh, three quarter ton single axle, uh, three, three quarter ton single axle, uh, and slap it underneath the truck, slap it underneath, slap it underneath the truck, because it would bolt up just exactly the same. Change out the front spindles, like I said, I mean, my spindles, but the, uh, you yeah, actually would have to change. No, no, no. I, I just had to. Say, I would have to get rotors to do different spindles for exactly the same. I just had to change out the uh, brakes. Tell my guys, the um, T20 brakes, and run discs on the front because I don't want no freaking jumps. Um, I also do the same thing with the back end. I actually make a kit for it now. It's actually really cheap and cheerful. 
I changed out those axles to actually discs on the front and rear, and they actually don't cost a whole lot of money. Another option, too, is that I don't have to get a three-quarter ton axles. I can get, like, a one-ton. I mean, I don't want to talk about, I can get, like, a half-ton axles. I could run it as a, uh, even though it's a technically a dually truck, I could actually, uh, you know, as a, you know, even though it's a, a, a cabin chassis truck, I could literally just put a four factory nine inch, get a uh, brand new, I mean, I could run a, um, I could literally get a, uh, a Chevrolet half ton axle put underneath it and change out the front to a five lug, you know, convert, all, get it all converted to a five lug axle. You don't have a scar body, you just put it in there because they literally both up just the same, literally the same. You know, just saying. Uh, or I can put, after, like I said, aftermarket axle put in there. I can put like a aftermarket six lug. Um, for nine inch rear end, they make them for the C10s, and which will bolt, obviously bolt up to the dually axle. It's the same, same, you know. All this is valid options, honestly. And yes, it, it depends on what I want to do. Well, they, they, and then, I, then you get the you get the comments. I can hear the comments screaming. But you can't pull that much weight at that point. Yes and no. Uh, I mean, the frame is basically what pulls your weight, along with your motor. Honestly, it's not really about your axles. Yeah, yeah if you're I mean, think about think about it. You get, you can get a. I'm gonna use a 2000s example. You can pick up a. You can literally pick up a 2000. And, I'm gonna use a 2003. Technically 99 to 06, the same truck. But I know everybody likes cat eyes, so I'm gonna go ahead and go with a cat eye look. Not everybody, but most people like cat eyes. I really don't care for cat eyes. Anyway, you can buy a 02. I mean, 03, sorry. 03 Chevy, Chevy Silverado. 3,500. HD truck. Single axle. It basically pulls the same amount of weight as a dually version. The only difference is that the dually version has a maybe a 1,000 pound difference. What are you gaining from the dually is that you can... Um, more stability when turning... Is it harder on a truck with a single axle? No, not really. But does it make them more load, more secure? Yes. And that's where everybody gets confused at. So uh, I have a HD. So if I, I take a. So you telling you? So you telling me that you're gonna take a dually axle eight lug and you're gonna go back down to the six lug that it's not gonna pull. It's not gonna hold that weight. Because that axle is rated for all that weight, and it, it, it's what that's what pulls it. Like no, the axles do not pull your 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 trunk weight. It's your frame, and your basically your frame and your motor. I mean, even motors basically the same for literally the rest of the. I mean, the, the motors are literally the same. For, I mean, it, it's the same as a, a half ton versus a three quarter ton or a full one ton. Your frame is what pulls your weight, honestly. Nothing to do with axles. I mean, yes, the axles do move before and backwards. Yes, they're not, they're not going to obviously throw a weak axle underneath it, but do you need a 14 bolt? No. Do you, can you get away with a 10 bolt? Yeah. 12 bolt? Yeah, of course. Any axle you want. Honestly. But I wouldn't suggest putting an S10 axle behind it. But I mean, but I mean, rib full size. So if I put a full 9 inch forward, for like example, let's say I go custom. I want to go custom everywhere. I want to go with a. I want a heavy truck, but I, you know, I want a, I want a fast truck. I mean, not fast truck, but I want to, I want to go aftermarket. I want disc brakes. I want arcade, just simply find a, you know, five lug version or six lug actual on a 67 to 72 truck. Also, I can't find that. This is, let's say I have to go aftermarket. So you tell me that a 67. That's, I mean, a, a, a axle, a nine inch forward axle, eight and a quarter axle will not pull 10,000 pounds that's ready for 500 plus horsepower. <laughs> I mean, think about that, guys. I mean, think about what you're saying on that. <laughs> I know there's some people in the comments who are going to say that. 
they will handle that power. Which means they will handle the output. All they're doing is all an axle does is it makes boost forward. It handles it's, it's designed to handle within your engine operation range. Honestly, it doesn't know it's a light duty axle. And here's another fun fact: before it hurts, you know some friends are crazy people. Did you know that two and a half ton trucks, especially in the 60s, 64 and below, they were on six lug axles. I mean, they, they had they didn't have eight lugs on their thing. They only had six lugs. Granted, there were some big fucking six lugs, but they were six lugs. They weren't eight. So that kind of, you know, and then, you know, two speed rear ends. Yeah. But, I mean, yeah, you're not going to put a sissy axle under a uh, one ton, but, I mean, two ton truck. But, I mean, we're not talking about a two ton truck. We're talking about a one ton. I mean, you know, I can get away with putting a four inch nine rear end on it. It will still pull 10,000 pounds. Long as all that axle does is making sure that it, it is. All the axle is doing is basically making sure that it's taking every torque. All the torque is getting from the transmission from the motor. That's all it's doing. The frame is literally what pulls with the motor. Is what pulls your. Whatever you're hauling. Whether it be a trailer with a lawnmower on it, or a car trailer with a big old city cab, uh, crew cab, eight foot bed truck, it does not matter. It is your frame and your motor that holds the weight. I mean, so you're saying I can, if you put a 12 ball on there. It won't snap eventually. Yeah, every axle will snap. The higher, you know, 10 bolt, 12 bolt, 14 bolt axles, the higher you go up, the better your axle strength is going to be. The more abuse you can basically take, basically take to it. A one ton axle is going to be a lot stronger than a half ton axle for rock crawling, uh, more abuse taking. But will a half ton axle handle uh, just as much as a one ton axle? Yes, but it makes no sense to use a half ton axle on a rock crawler. Lily doesn't because it will snap. I mean, it will break a lot quicker than a one ton axle. But if you're just, like I say, if you're just literally, and I mean literally, just hollowing and you're not rock crawling or anything like that, then yeah, a, a half ton, three quarter ton. Full one ton axles, they're fine. Would I like to keep the dually axle in the truck? Yes, but it's all about the cost, and that's honestly a you know, you have to be honest with yourself, people. It is, it, it's a little, it is what it is on that. I mean, I'm not trying to be, you know, whatever on it. I mean, I would love to actually have the dually axle in the truck, I would like to keep it all promoted. I mean. There's a few things I'm going to change. Obviously, it's not factory on it. I mean, it's factory on it. I'm going to change it, obviously, a lot. Well, for one, I'm going to put a factory bed at, a bed out there that was never put on there from the factory for a dually because of the fact that they just didn't do it. Now, now I'm going to leave you all with a thought, and then I'm going to, you know, basically, I'm going to include this thing. For those who are wondering, the recap. I have three options. I have... I can put a flatbed on it. Which I'm not looking forward to. <laughs> Doing option two. I can put a step side bed. I mean, make a step side bed. I mean, I mean, you know, I would have to, you know, put, I could put a step side bed on the truck. Or option three... Well, actually, I have four options, actually. I'm sorry, guys. First one, flatbed. Second one, um, step side, factory step side bed on it. Third one is uh, simply tuck my axle. I mean, shorten my axle. Yeah, shorten, shorten the axle up a little bit, quite a bit, to make it fit inside of a normal bed, and then just, you know, modify, modify, modify the crap out of it. I mean, on the, on the bed a little bit on the inside, which is fine. I don't care to do that on the inside, because 
can still a truck a foot bed i can still throw what i want on the back of the truck it'll still haul garbage i mean i'm not garbage but it'll still haul garbage it'll still haul it'll still haul groceries it'll still do everything i want to do or the fourth option is changing the axles out to a different axle and it's something for y'all to decide on. I mean, it's something I'm going to decide on, and I'm going to think, and I'll let y'all know. As always, I hope y'all have a great day. I'm going to probably make another video today about it. But I'll see y'all in the next one. Bye.